I think uh, climate change issue has already been securitized, so no question of whether it should be securitized or not. If you think the way this uh, IPSS or uh, policy institute or the sending countries the way they are arguing about why climate change should be taken into consideration and why all these uh, you know greater resource allocation should be done and then general mode it cannot be taken into consideration into mainstream administrative or policy decision it has to be taken into emergency mode all these things you see when all these reports are talking about climate change this many people will be you know uprooted this type of uh, inhabited will be lost this many uh, villages will be gone this many water area uh, uh, ag agricultural lands will be turned transformed into marshy lands so all these are act of securitization all these are speech act which is taking place but at the beginning i would say sending countries as well as all these reports were securitizing in favor of helping those who will be uprooted those who will be displaced but more and more you see militaristic solutions are coming in and military as an institution seeing that they can benefit from this whole climate change and securitization debate therefore now they have become one of the securitizing actor and what they are doing they are bringing in military hardcore military issues and migration they are treating as a hardcore issue all along we treated migration as a soft issue in security discourse but they would like to see it as a hardcore issue and they would like to turn it towards the conflictual situation it may raise but what we think that those who are losing everything that they are the migrant population the whole securitizing act before was in favor of these people who will lose lose out in this process therefore the whole resource allocation should be for making them capable to adapt with the climate change situation. If we think about South Asia definitely Bangladesh is one of the most vulnerable in like producing environment induced migrants and for Bangladesh as well as like if you think of Urissa in India that is also another area and then southwest of Bangladesh and Sundarban largest mangrove area which is covering both India and Bangladesh all these places will induce population movement of course the figures that we get from uh, you know these large scale studies they don't take into account the type of adaptation programs will take which will take place later or the land that will you know uh, gained over the years those things they don't take into account therefore these figures may not be accurate figures but what is important that large scale population movement will take place now which are the areas where they will go there are four types of population movement one is internal population movement then we have cross-border population movement then again we have uh, short-term contract migration to Middle East and Southeast Asian countries and long-term diaspora movement so all these actually works through social network and when you think about internal migration their number will be the highest which is within the country and usually studies have shown one person move within the country at least four times before deciding to move from a country to another country then if you think about Bangladesh is moving in the cross-border situation in the three areas we have India and then informal trade and other things and also for traditional uh, relationship as a subcontinent thousands of years people have moved so those streams are there and particularly due to man-made uh, catastrophes if you say Farakka Dam and other things a lot of people are already moving 
to India, which Ashok Swen's study have shown that these are all those who have been affected through Faraka Barrage. There are many other Tipaimuk Barrage and others are coming up and I think they will again induce migration. So at the end, the country which will receive them may have something in creating such environments. So therefore, it is very important for interstate cooperation when we are thinking of how to handle climate change, climate change related migration. In the Southeast Asian context, I would say Vietnam is the place from where large-scale migration will take place, may take place and then again internal migration will be much higher than international migration. Since there are cross uh, international short-term contract migration uh, that country is participating very well so therefore it is expected their migration will increase in the Middle Eastern and Southeast Asian countries as labor migrant. I think there are always, whenever it's migration of women, there are always certain pockets from where women migrated. What I see due to environmental sort of changes, there will be new pockets of female migration. And then it is important for, for every state in Asia from where which are the sending countries to actually go into those places from where my, uh, climate change is occurring and come up with administrative and regulative framework to facilitate female migration. Therefore, if that is done, then new pockets will emerge and more women will migrate and therefore new livelihood opportunities they will have to cope with the changed situation and livelihood loss. But if these countries still continue with their restrictive policies on female migration, then it will lead to more and more irregular population movement, in this case irregular women migrants and this situation may lead to traffickers to entice migration from the environmentally hardcore areas. So it is important that state come up with policies that facilitates women migration both internal and international. The second point here is what I see in the receiving countries there will be certain change because there will be more people available to migrate the wage and everything can go down and also because women mostly work in the care industry so it may very well happen particularly the domestic workers may face worsening work condition because of the actual increase in number of uh, number available to participate in the market. In that case, all these global and multilateral forums which are dealing with migration, that is the UN for, uh, forum or Global Forum on Migration and Development, should actually link and coordinate with those UN bodies which are dealing with climate change issues and try to come up with legislation which brings in this type of employment like domestic work out of domestic sphere of home, private sphere of home and treat them under labor law of those countries. So therefore, if these things are done from the very beginning, then I would say to some women out of desperate situation, maybe the migration is taking place, but it can be empowering because their income and everything may go up due to international migration. So therefore, it can turn into an empowering experience for certain women. So it depends on the policymakers, national and global, how they want to act on this particular issue. Mm -hmm.